Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Thought we'd get to another one of our series of Words to Know Prophet. Religious titles. Now, for some of you, you probably jump into this, you've read the title, and you're thinking, well, we're going to get to go through all these religious titles. That's not what I'm going to do, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? Um, the Bible has uh, descriptions of um, uh, descriptions of what people are and what's going on today for some reason mankind they want their own religious titles they're just re religious title fanatics and they want to take descriptions that God has for mankind that follow him and they want to take those descriptions and they want to turn them into titles but I thought we'd do something a little bit better I thought we instead of just going over all the titles and for some people you know you have studies that are great studies and you're passionate about. You have studies that are, eh, they're okay. And then you have studies that you do that's like, uh, i got to get through this. So I don't know what kind of studies will be for you, brothers and sisters of Christ. But if you love the Word and you want to learn something, we're going to learn something today. Okay? So we're going to, instead, we're going to go through the Pauline epistles and we're going to use Paul as the example. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. And we're going to use Paul as the example of how to address people. I mean, you got people in the Bible that says, to call no man your father. And it's talked about as a religious title. Okay, you got people using saint as a title. You got people using um, Church of the Living God as a title. Uh, Church of God as a title. Um, and we did a study on this before about Christian, brothers and sisters Christ, words to no profit, where people are arguing over the word Christian. They're trying to denounce being a Christian. Okay, what does Christ mean? God saves. Okay, he's the Christ. And we're called Christians. Those who are truly saved and use the word properly, we're called Christians. Jesus Christ saves. All right? In the Old Testament, we read how God says that my people will be called by my name. Jesus Christ, Christian. All right? And Paul, we did the whole study, I'm just going over a little bit, but Paul uses the word Christian. Paul is actually accused, accused of being a Christian, and he doesn't deny it. Why is there a big movement now denying the one thing in the Bible that's actually a title, it's a capital C Christian, it's a title, why is it we're trying to denounce that? Well, we talked about this in the other study, I understand to a point but I'm never going to denounce being a Christian. I'm never going to stand here and say, I'm not a Christian. Christ saves you. You mean Jesus didn't save you? Because that's what you're saying when you say you're not a Christian. Jesus didn't save you. Instead, I understand the frustration that the lost world has taken the word Christian and perverted it. Anyone can call themselves a Christian today. All these false religions, people that don't even aren't even part of false religions, they just go around saying, hey, I, I get treated better if I just put Christian down. You know, like in the military, you had to put down your religious affiliation. When you, you know, all these different things that you fill out, uh, hospital forms, they might have you fill out your religious affiliation. Well, I, in the past, maybe, maybe not today, but in the past, you got treated better if you signed Christian. Well, I'll just sign Christian, you know? So today, I understand the frustration but a brother in Christ, a 33rd book, if you know who he is, he has some good studies on Bible version issue. And when people try to attack the Bible and say, we need to change this for whatever reason, he stands for the word of God. And he had a good point. He says, I don't like using the, ter the, the, the term Chris Christian. See, he does it right. I don't like using the term Christian. Why? Because everybody calls themselves a Christian today. Everybody does. He prefers Bible believer. That I can understand, and I, and I do. I can relate to that. I've come across when I'm trying to hand out gospel tracts, I'm trying to preach the gospel to the people here in town, to family members that profess to be saved. The first thing that always comes out, oh, I'm a Christian too. And you sit down and talk with them. They didn't get saved God's way. That's found in this book, King James Bible, for English, God's perfect written word for English speaking people. King James Bible, that was another word I had to defend because you can't use a holy Bible, but you can use authorized version. Authorized version isn't in the scriptures, but it's okay. But you can't say King James Bible because that's not in the scriptures. Okay. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. 
I'm not attacking these brothers in Christ. I love my brothers in Christ. What's going on is the world, you're, you're starting to get confused because the world as a whole is taking everything from this book and perverting it. And we're trying to find out some way we can be different and stand out and be apart because we're supposed to be separate. We need to just take the words God has given us and stand for them and use them the proper way. And keep calling them out who use it wrongly and incorrectly. False converts. Okay, the Bible says false brethren. Right? That's another thing about Paul when it comes to Chris, a Christian. When he gets a chance to say, I'm not a Christian, I'm, I'm a part of the church of God. Uh, he doesn't correct the man. He doesn't denounce saying, I'm not a Christian. He never once said, I'm not a Christian. Neither did Peter. Neither did John. Neither did Timothy. Silas. And you can go down the list. Right? And when he had a chance to call out, if Christian was a bad word and a bad term for us, when he had a chance to call out Christians for being fakes and frauds, he says, false Christians. No. He said, false brethren. He didn't say false Christians. Christians is a bad word and we shouldn't use it. No, the world perverts it. we got to do what's right by the scriptures. That's the whole point, brother says Christ. I believe that's what's motivating some brethren. And their hearts are in the right place, but they're getting too overzealous that they're actually attacking the word of God when they think they're defending the word of God. Okay. Brother says Christ, there are words in this that get misused. A great famous one is the word gay, means uh, rich and colorful. That's what the word gay means. But the lost world has perverted it, so now we're fearful to use the word gay, and the Bible perversionists are trying to use that to attack the word of God. And they keep using all kinds of other things to attack the word of God. But there's nothing wrong with saying Holy Bible. There's nothing wrong with using the word Christian, but here's how I do it. I say I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, a Christian man according to God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. I have to do that in these last days. You've really got to spell it out in these last days. Leave no room for error. Okay? But you will never ever dare catch me saying, I'm not a Christian. Did Paul ever deny being a Christian? No, he did not. He was accused of it by King Agrippa straight to his face. And did he deny it? He said, not only thou, because King Rip said, persuadest thou me to be a Christian? This was Paul's chance to deny it. I'm not a Christian. I don't want you to be a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm part of the church of God. No. He looked at him and goes, I'll, not only thou, but all that hear me this day become Christians. That's what he's saying. Not only thou, but all that hear me this day or as I am, except these bonds, because he was in chains. He said, I wish everybody would let Jesus save them. Let Jesus be their Savior. I wish everybody would get saved. That's what he's saying. And back then, at his time, the only people that were called Christians in his time were people who were professing to be saved by Jesus Christ following what Paul was teaching and preaching. Then you had people coming in trying to screw it up, of course. Then you had people that were false brethren. Oh, this is a free pass to sin. I don't have to change my life. I don't have to really give my life to Jesus Christ. I just have to have head belief. And I'm saved. Faith alone. You see? I don't have to follow the steps that God made. Uh, yeah, there are steps you got to, to follow to find God's grace. you got to do things God's way. And mankind doesn't want to do things God's way. Mankind doesn't want God being the final authority in their life. So what do they do? They mess with this book. They pervert this book. They get people to doubt this book in any way, shape that they can. But you have all kinds of religious titles. Uh, you hear people called Preacher Bob. I'm just going to use the word Bob. Preacher Bob. Reverend Bob. Dr. Bob. Okay. Okay. Uh, Teacher Bob, okay, bishops, like uh, you have bishops, Archbishop Bob, um, Cardinal Bob, and this and that. It's like all these religious titles. You can go through all of them, and some brethren have. But the easiest way to sell this is simply go to Paul. He's the example. He says, be followers of me as I am of Christ, okay? Follow us for, as you have us for an example. So, let's use Paul as an example, 
First Timothy 3.15. First thing I want to go over again real quick. First Timothy 3.15. Some people are really getting into this. And like I said before, if you want to, use this as a description of, the, of, of saved sinners by all means. But be careful that you're not falling into the trap of using it as a title. It's not a title. Okay. First Timothy 3.15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtst to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Stop there. Why does it say the house of God, which is the church of the living God? What was the house of God in the Old Testament? Some people say, oh, there wasn't a house of God in the Old Testament. You're pretty ignorant of scripture. I'm going to let you guys figure that one out. The house of God in the Old Testament. What was the house of God in the Old Testament? I'll give you guys some... Um, Homework. What was the house of God in the Old Testament? Today, but what is it today? Which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then it says, sanctifying through thy truth, thy word is truth. So the church of the living God has a perfect written record, God's perfect written word, that they hide in their heart, and they have Jesus in them who is the way, truth, and the life. When they have Jesus in them, I'm not talking about physically having Jesus in them. Jesus says, I will be with you. Knows not that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you? What's he saying? He talks about, I will be with you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will be with you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he talks about how the Holy Spirit's going to come. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you've got Jesus in you. Okay, you have God in you. That goes back to the Godhead. Okay, they all are connected to the Holy Spirit, so they can each one claim to be in you. But you have the Holy Spirit in you. Okay? The pillar and ground of the truth. That's what the house of God is today. Now notice that the church of the... Not, not all things have to be capitalized. I understand that. But for this, it says, Now the church of the living God is not capitalized... Why? Because it's a description. You can even tell by the context, it's a description of what the house of God is. It's not a title. Some brethren are taking that and using it as a title. Now, as I said before, if you've got a search engine, go into the search engine and type in Church of the Living God. Type it in. See what you come up with. Is it going to come up with tons and tons of Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries? Uh, I, I looked at some of those and it's like, uh, they're not even close. They don't line up with this book. What is it? It's the lost world taking something from the Bible and perverting it. Okay. Uh, I understand we want to go back to doing things God's way. We want to stand out and everything. We want to fight, fight, fight. But the best way you can fight for this book is just stand for this book being absolute truth. Okay, Church of the Living God is a description for the house of God. It is truth, and I'm going to use it God's way. It's talking about people who are truly saved, born again. They hide God, Jesus in their heart, and they hide His Word in his, their heart. Truth. Okay? Bible, that's why we say Bible believers today. But guess what? Type in Bible believers and see what you get on the search engine. You're going to get some people that you look at them and you start studying them and researching their ministry. It's like, they're not Bible believers. Everything's been perverted today. So what do we do? Just take and rip out everything out of the Bible because it's been perverted today? No, we do not. Do we forsake things in the words in the Bible because it's been misused? No, we do not. We use it properly and we stand for this book until we get caught up in death or we get caught up in life. Caught up in death, you know, God says, hey, your time's up. You fought the good fight. Okay, you stood for the faith. I'm calling you home. In death, or in life, the catching away of the body of Christ, where everybody goes home, those that are alive and remain shall be caught up. All right. So I want to throw that there because we're going to go through all the times that Paul addresses saved sinners, and we're going to see if he ever uses Church of the Living God as a greeting. All right. Now, not like I said, I'm not, this is not attack, but he's, does he use bishop? Does he use um, archbishop? Does he use father so-and-so or this? We're going to go through and we're just going to do it the most simplest way to do it. We're just going to go through the, all the different Pauline epistles and we're going to see how he greets people. Like I said, it might be boring to some people. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you've got to do the boring studies. They're important. And later on in life, it might come across you 
the experience of something you're having to deal with, maybe you can start dealing with a guy that's part of a religion, false religion, that's hardcore on titles, and you come back to the study and remember things that will help you. Then it becomes important. It might not be important now, but it may be important later. Okay? So, how did Paul, how did Paul address Timothy, Titus, the church? So turn to 1 Timothy 1.1. 1, 1. Probably don't have to. We're already there. 1 Timothy 1.1. 1, 1. Okay. We read, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, an apostle. Paul called himself an apostle. Okay. This is a whole other discussion, but I did a study and someone did not, uh, disagreed. When you get to Acts, they had 11 apostles and they decided to appoint their own man as an apostle that Jesus didn't appoint. So that man wasn't an apostle. It says he was named among them, but who named him among them? We've got to get context, rightly dividing. The people named him an apostle. God didn't. The people did. Okay. But who was the 12th apostle? Paul was. Right. When, and another thing that I kind of left out on that study, Brother Jesus Christ, just a tangent, please bear with me, is that when you get to the New Jerusalem, there's only 12 thrones for the 12 apostles. There's only 12 apostles, period. One fell away and lost his position. We all know about him, Judas Iscariot. But who's the 12th one? The real apostle that come up and replaced Judas Iscariot. There can only be 12. So in the book of Acts, you have the people... Uh, uh, naming this guy an apostle, but then you have God naming Paul an apostle, and then here you have Paul saying he's an apostle. Right. I'm going to go with this and say Paul's the 12th apostle. Right. A little side note. Right. Apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, not men, God. So that helps out too. Our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy. Now stop and let that sink in, brother, says Christ. After all the religious titles you've ever heard and everything and how we address people day to today, uh, fellow uh, sa uh, saved sinners, um, let that sink in. Unto Timothy. Oh, come on, Paul. Can you do something a little bit more? We need some titles. For some reason, mankind needs religious titles. We need titles. Come on, Paul. Where's the title at? It's not there. It's just Timothy. He calls him by his name. Let's keep reading. My own son in the faith. Okay. Now he's describing who Timothy is. Timothy is like his son, but in the faith. Paul didn't have any actual sons. It's not saying Paul is going to be a religious title father, and you can have a religious title son. That's not what this is talking about. Paul did not have any children. Timothy followed him everywhere, and Timothy learned from him, as a child is supposed to do from his father. I'm talking about when it comes to the family structure. Sons should be grown up to be like their fathers. Daughters should be grown up to be like their mothers. And their mothers are supposed to be teaching their daughters and training their daughters to be young women, not children, all their lives. Fathers the same way. You're supposed to be training your, your sons to grow up to be young men. Right? When you have people in ministry that are teaching others to be in ministry, you're supposed to be teaching them as a father would a son to grow them up so they can be young men in the ministry. Okay? And that's what's going on here. My own son in the faith. He led Timothy to Christ, taught Timothy how to live a life of Christ, to do right, to live right, what's, what's, what we're supposed to believe, what we're supposed to preach, what we're supposed to teach. He taught him. Right? Uh, one of my biggest things, another side note, is when you lead someone to Christ, brother, sister, Christ, you need to give them, okay, now get a King James Bible. Let me show you how to pray. It's not too hard. I mean, you should, but they ask Jesus how to pray. Um, some people just get, you know, I don't know how to pray. Well, teach them how to pray. Teach them uh, that they need to get a King James Bible. They need to be reading it every morning, every evening. Start your day, end your day with the Word of God. And you need to teach them how to read the Bible. Okay? Expository studies, uh, subject studies, word studies, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let them know that they need to rightly divide. Okay? And, and then you're there for them to help them on the way. 
Okay, as, they, as they're walking with the Lord and they start stumbling or having problems, you're there to help them, as a father would a son. That's all this is talking about. But notice it's a description of who Timothy is. My own son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. From, uh, I said, grace, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, I used to the Lord Jesus Christ. So there you have it. <coughs> he doesn't say, and please, please, brother Jesus Christ, don't get upset with me. He doesn't say, brother Timothy. If it's a one-on-one, -on -one, or you're addressing someone face to face in the first person, how does Paul address him? Timothy. Hey, Timothy, how's it going? See, today, we, through traditions of men, I, I didn't look into this when it first started, but we had to start calling everybody brothers and sisters of Christ as a title. Putting brother and sister Christ before the name. I don't know. And I'm not, like I said, if you want to call me Brother Philip, okay. But I'm just using Paul as an example. He has a chance to show us, he could say, Brother Timothy. Unto Brother Timothy. He doesn't. He says, Unto Timothy. Okay. Let's turn to 2 Timothy. Let's see how he addresses Timothy in 2 Timothy. My dearly, uh, to Timothy, there we say again, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 2, that's what it is, I forgot to put <coughs> 2 Timothy on here, <coughs> excuse me, it's just, it just says 2, 2 Timothy, so it almost looks like 2 Timothy without the 2, okay. my notes sometimes are flawed. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we read, <clears throat> To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our, from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Once again, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, son in the faith, that's all he's saying. But once again, he just says, Timothy, Father Timothy, Bishop Timothy. Is he saying any of that garbage? No. Okay. Religious titles. Okay. I got this right here. We're going to get to this. It's an old hymn called Jesus, Name Above All Names. And it goes through all these different titles slash names for God. For Jesus Christ, who is God. This is the titles we should be worrying about. Titles for man? Be very careful. Be very careful. Okay. So Timothy, what's his solution? Timothy, if you're talking to me and you say, Philip, I'm not going to be all offended. You needed to say, Brother Philip. You need to say, Preacher Philip. Pastor Philip. Reverend Philip. Uh, reverend's for God, not for man. So they're taking the title for God and trying to add it to man. Okay? No. If you say, hey, Philip, how's it going? How's your walk with the Lord? Philip, I'm not going to be offended. Okay? And neither should you. I've had people get offended. You didn't call me brother. Okay. Why are you offended? Timothy wasn't. What about Titus? Let's turn to Titus. Okay. Which was actually the next book. Been going through a lot of the Old Testament lately. <laughs> I need to get back to the New Testament. Uh, in my personal studies, been going through a lot of the Old Testament lately. I'm down to two books left in the uh, of the prophets in the Old Testament: Micah and the one before Micah. I hate not because I don't have all the Old Testament books memorized, and I need to, which I'm working on. Okay. Uh, So I'm going to do it. There's have a pet. Anyway, we're getting to, like I said, I'm getting to the end. And then I got to start all over. That's how I do my private studies on the Bible. I start listening to Genesis 1-1 and I go through the whole thing. And this winter, I'm going to be taking this big book here that I showed you guys. Best $25 I ever spent. It's the biggest Bible I've got. It's a King James Bible. The lettering's big enough. And I'm going to sit in there, and I'm going to go through it this winter 
and uh, follow along with Alexander Scorvey as I read because it helps um, to hear it and to read it. And there's times where I read it out loud myself without Alexander Scorvey. But I'm going to go through that whole book and find out and make sure that, hey, it is a good book. It is a, Bi a King James Bible. It's not been perverted because sometimes things will say King James. But remember the Bible we went through that said it's King James Bible. But then when you actually started reading the introduction and everything, but we dumbed it down for kids. It wasn't a King James Bible then. They lied. Okay? They perverted the Word of God. But Titus, Titus, Titus 1.1. 1, 1. We read, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Notice he threw in servant. Why did he do that? To show humbleness. Yeah, I'm an apostle, but I'm a servant of God just like you are, brother and sister Christ. Now he said, you said brother and sister Christ? Yeah, we're going to get into this. When I'm addressing the, the, the body of Christ in general, in a third, second or third person, okay, you can say, brothers and sisters in Christ, brethren, church of God. Okay. But you see, he's saying, I'm just like you guys. I'm a servant. We're all supposed to be servants. Okay. An apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and to the acknowledgement of the truth which is after godliness, and hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, God that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifest his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Notice he talks about preaching, but he doesn't say, I have to be called Preacher Paul. Okay? He doesn't turn it into a title. It's a description. Okay? According to the commandments of God our Savior. Verse 4, to Titus. He says here, my own son after the common faith. Once again, he led Titus to the Lord. He taught Titus how to live for Jesus Christ. And then he taught Titus how to be in the ministry. It's like a son. Teaching a son and raising a son up to go out in the world. Mm -hmm. But notice he says to Titus. No, no, no. We got, we got to have titles. We got to have titles, Paul. The lost world wants titles. But this is Christ. We're not supposed to be like that. I don't need titles. Don't want titles. Descriptions, yeah, I'm all for descriptions. But I don't need titles. It's Philip. Like I said, if you want to say Brother Philip, traditions of men, eh, fine. But after doing this study, I realized it's just Philip. If you say Philip, I'm getting ahead of myself, if you say Philip, who is a brother, you can do it that way because then you're using brother as a description, not a title. Mm -hmm. But he says to Titus, when it's one-on-one -on -one with somebody, it's personal, there's no titles. They don't put titles in front of the names whatsoever. It's just Timothy. It's just Titus. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people one-on-one. -on -one. I've had some people call me, like, Pastor Phil. I'm not a pastor. I preach, I preach and teach the Word of God online, but I don't have a house church. I'm not a pastor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a preacher, but it's still not preacher Phil. It's just Phil. You can say Philip, I, I, like, I, like if you're not talking to me, but you're talking about me with somebody else, the second, the third person, you can say Philip, who is a preacher. Philip, who is a Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. I do preach the gospel downtown. I pray you guys do too when the um, Lord opens doors for you. Mm -hmm. I preach the word, but I do Bible studies also and teach. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's used as a description. Be careful not to be using things as titles that aren't titles. Remember, what's the most important title? God's titles. Not our titles. We don't have titles for the most part. Okay? The reason I got on to Christmas again, or Christmas, Christian, starts with a C, Christian is because it's capitalized four times in the Bible. Usually when it's capitalized, it's a title. It's a proper pronoun, person, place, or thing. Right. But Paul just causes Titus by his name. Right. And once again, I put in the notes, why do we need all these religious titles? Well, we've got to have titles, titles, titles. We need to go back to being simple, brothers and Christ. You can just call me Philip, and I won't be offended. You get some of those people in the battle buildings and everything that 
uh, all puffed up in their pride and their ego, and some online puffed up in their pride and their ego, if you don't call them by some kind of a title before their name, oh boy, they're liable to blow, their head's li li liable to explode. <laughs> yeah. So, brother says Christ, that's the personal. Now let's go into, let's see how Paul addresses the church of God, save sinners in a second or third person. That's first person. How does he address a brother or sister in Christ, third person? I mean, sorry, first person? He calls them by their name. He has a description, but he calls them by their name. Yeah. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.1 Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Why did Paul have to keep saying he's an apostle over and over? Because there are false apostles out there. We learn that in Revelation that say there are apostles or not and are found to be liars. There's people that are fakes and frauds out there. All right. He's pushing this. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sothens, our brother. Okay. I have this in glad we stop there. Sothens, our brother. He uses as a description of somebody that's with him. He's a and he's a brother in Christ. So both myself, Paul, and so uh, I probably pronounce mispronounced that, but Sothens. Okay, we're here to greet you. Verse two, unto the church of God. Unto the church of God. God is capitalized because there's a capital G God and there's a lowercase g God. There's a lowercase g God of the world, lowercase g gods, and there's only one capital G God, the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Okay? But church is lowercase. It's a description. Unto the church of God, which is in Corinth. This is a description. It's not a title. It's, de it's describing the people they're addressing at Corinth, the church of God. To them, and here it gets even more detailed, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Okay? B, it's something that you are. It's not a title. It's a description of what you are. Called to be saints. With all that is in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We know of a false religion, Catholicism, that likes to turn people into saint so-and-so. Saint so-and-so. They take the word saint, capitalize the word S, and make it a title. But it's not a title. It's a description. And with all those who get saved are saints. Today, we're all saints. But the Catholic Church would have you believe you need their permission to be a saint. And we're the ones that declare who's a saint and who's not a saint. Once again, God's not the authority anymore. Mankind is. Yea, hath God said. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. You can be the final authority. Okay? Saint is used here as a description. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? If you call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. You follow the proper steps. If you read that whole chapter before, there's steps that you have to follow. And once you follow those steps, whosoever... You follow those steps, repentance, belief, confess both in prayer, and then you get to the part where it's calling out, whoever followed those steps properly, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. And with all that in every place call upon the name of, the, of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Verse 3, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here that he uses the word saints, he used the word Church of God, but they're descriptions, they're not titles. Be very careful of religious titles. He's talking about the people, and he goes into more detail to describe who he's talking to, or who he's addressing, I mean. Because today, if you just said Church of God, what does that mean? It's been perverted today. Okay, There's a lot of people who claim to be part of the Church of God. To them that are sanctified in Christ. You look at these people that claim to be part of the church of God, what's their attitude towards this book? The Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
What's their attitude towards God's perfect written word, the King James Bible, for today? Right? Saint, then that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all and everywhere, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a movement today that says you don't have to call upon the Lord. You don't have to pray. Prayer is a work. You just have to have head belief. They've turned repentance into works. Now they're turning prayer into works. This is an address to them. Those who refuse to, to confess both in prayer and ask God to save them, sometimes beg God to save them, this is an address to you. He's not talking to you. Paul's not talking to you. This, is, this book isn't for you as far as this. You need to get saved first. I know that upsets a lot of these people that are trying to say, you don't have to use prayer anymore. Prayer is a word. Prayer. And every place that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See how he singles them out? Not just church of God or saints, because that's been perverted today. It's almost if like God knew that would be perverted today. He goes a step further to explain who those church of God are and who those saints are. Church of God are them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. The saints are those that are everyone that's called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. They've asked God to save them, and He did. All right. Second Corinthians. Turn to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians one one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother. Oh, come on, Paul, this is your chance to say, Brother Timothy. Use it as a title. He doesn't. He says, Timothy, our brother. Timothy, our brother. And some of you like to say, are you just saying we can't say brother so-and-so? I'm just saying, be careful. I'm using the Bible as the example, not traditions of men. I'm using the Bible as an example, not my feelings and opinions. For some reason, mankind wants to be elevated. We need to be put down. We need to be put in our place. But for some reason, man likes to elevate themselves up and bring God down. We need to put ourselves down and elevate God and put Him up where He belongs. He's already there, but we need to exalt Him in that position that He's already in and glorify Him and praise Him, not try to tear Jesus down and lift up mankind. All right. It says here, Timothy, our brother. Once again, Paul has to say he's an apostle. Why? Because there are false apostles out there. Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God. Once again, you're going to find out, like I said, I'm not against it. If you want to say church of the living God, fine. But I say church of God. Why don't I say that left and right, left and right? Because the Bible doesn't say it left and right. It uses it as a description for the house of God. But what does Paul say, he doesn't say church of the living God. Yes, we serve a living, risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men may say. Okay, that hold him. Okay, We serve a risen Savior. We serve a living God. That is true. But Paul just says church of God, which is at Corinth. Okay. Notice it's a capital G God. It should, for us that know better, we study the scriptures. When it's a capital G God, it's a living God. When it's a lowercase g God, it's either a reference to Satan or a dead God, a false God. You know, like wood, stone, earth, they're, earth, they're just dead. Right? We serve a, a, a living God, which is a capital G God, right? which is at Corinth with all the saints which are in Achaia. Okay? You go back to 1 Corinthians and you see how he, he, he defined the church of God to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Saints, every place that upon every name, call upon every, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who called upon the name of the Lord. So here it says, the Corinth, with all, with, which at Corinth, with all the saints which are at, which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord, from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see church of God again and saints again being used. It's a big one. Okay. Today we don't really use saints that much. Why? Because it's been perverted by the Catholic Church. Been perverted by other false religions. But is it wrong for us to use saints? No, Paul did. Paul did. But why don't we use it? We tend to steer away from God's word and what God chose because the lost world has perverted it and we don't want to be yoked up with them. 
I understand that, brothers and sisters Christ. But we need to still stand for what is right. We still need to stand for God's Word and how God wants us to do things. Even if the world perverts it, we need to continue doing it God's way. Okay? Not the world's way. Okay? Who is a saint? Philip, who is a saint? That's God's way. Saint Philip, that's the world's way. Catholicism. See, we don't do it the world's way. We do it God's way. Philip, who is a saint? Who's part, Philip, who is part of the church of God? Philip, who is a brother? Despite what some people might say, Philip, who is a brother? Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Church of God is not a title, but a description of a group of saints in one area. And the saints is also a description. Okay? It's not a title. It's, just, it's a description when you pull them all together. Okay? Now, when, when referring to an individual in the third person, like we see here with slothfulness, we can say, brother, almost want to just say slothfulness, we can say, brother, so-and-so. Okay? Someone who is a brother, yeah, you can say, brother, so-and-so, when you're talking about somebody. Have, have, you, have you prayed for brother so-and-so? He's having a hard time. So-and-so who is a brother in Christ, are you praying for him? Okay? That's there. Okay? But to their face, did Paul say, brother Timothy, to his face? No. What was it, Timothy? What about Titus to his face? Brother Titus. Church of the living God, Titus. Bishop Titus. Pastor Titus. No, it's just Titus. Hey, Titus, how you doing? How's your walk with the Lord? Right? Some people, like I said, some people just get so bent out of shape. If you don't have it, if you don't put a title before their name, they have to have some kind of title before their name. I'm not one of those people, brother says Christ. It's Philip. That's the name God gave me, Philip Fraser Newton. That's my full name. Some of you don't know, but that's my full name, Philip Fraser Newton. When I get called to the judgment seat of Christ, because I am saved, and I will be going to heaven someday. When he calls my name, it's not going to be Brother Philip Fraser Newton. It's not going to be Pastor Philip, not Pastor Philip, not Preacher Philip, not whatever type. He's going to call me by the name that God gave me, Philip Fraser Newton. Step forward. It's your turn to be judged. It's your time to be judged. Oh boy. Will I be walking up and falling flat on my face? Yes, I will. But the point is, is he's going to call us by our names. That's how we're supposed to call each other, by your name. Right? That's why I'm against uh, making fun of people's names. There's nothing wrong with saying this man is a serpent as a description. He's a snake as a description. He's a harlot. Okay? You can use descriptive words, but I'm against taking that man's name and making fun of that man's name, twisting it. So you can get a laugh out of it. That name is the name that God gave them, and that's the name they're going to be answering for. Whether they're saved and fallen away and have to answer for it at the judgment seat of Christ, or whether they're lost and they're going to go to hell and they have to go up and stand before Jesus Christ at the, judge, uh, the great white throne judgment. It's the same seat. It's just one, two different time periods. But the great white throne is where the lost world's getting judged. Whatever throne you get called up to, he's going to call you by your name. That's how we're supposed to be doing it. Be careful not to get into the drama and the flesh high of mocking and calling people names and backbiting and whispering. Okay? Don't get into that. That's Satan. That's the world. That's not God's way. Okay? There's nothing wrong with saying this man's a serpent. This man's a snake. This man's a harlot. This man's a heretic. Okay? This man is a heretic. That's a description. Heretic Phil. I'll use my name. Heretic Phil. Now you're turning it into a title and, and, and mocking what the word really is supposed to be about. No, it's Philip who is a heretic. I'm not a heretic. I'm just saying, using my name because I don't want to offend anybody else. Philip who is a liar. 
Liar Phil! No, that, now that's a title. Philip, who is a liar. Even with Satan, he's the father of li He's the father of it. He's a liar from the beginning and the father of it. It's a description of who he is. <clears throat> okay. Be careful. Turn to Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Let's go to Galatians. The next book over. Trying to do all this stuff in order. Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Hopefully some of you are still with me and haven't turned this off already. I want my titles. I want my religious titles. Like I said, this is a different way to look at it. Some people, some brethren out there might have done the study this way, but most of the time they like to go straight to the calling out all the different titles, religious titles as being false, and going to the Bible saying, look at all these religious titles that are actually descriptions and being misused as religious titles. Those are great studies. But I thought we'd take a different view. We'd just go through the Pauline epistles and see how Paul addressed people. He sets the example. He says, be ye followers of me. Okay? You have us for an example. Paul sets an example. So let's see what the kind of example Paul set. Galatians 1.1 1, 1. Paul... <clears throat> An apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. There we see God the Father again. A little side note. God the Father is biblical. God the Son is not. God the Holy Spirit is not. It's the Son of God the Father. The Spirit of God the Father. God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit shows connection. The Spirit of God shows connection from the Holy Spirit to God. Of shows connection. You have the Son of God. Okay? God manifests in the flesh. Shows connection. But there we see that. Just a little side note. The Godhead is truth. Forsake the pagan trinity and stick to the Godhead of the King James Bible. No man, I'm sorry, but no man who has studied the issue can call themselves, I, 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 I'll say you're a liar can call themselves a Bible believer and still believe the Trinity after doing the study, like we're doing today. What does the Bible have to say? Capital T Trinity, where's that at? As a title for God in the Scriptures, it's not there. Lowercase Trinity is a description of God in the Scriptures, it's not there. Trinity is a female's name, a woman's name. Okay? Um, God the Son is not in Scripture. God, the Holy Spirit, is not in Scripture. God is three persons. God in three persons. That's not in Scripture. Just go over it. Just because some people have any questions. I've got some studies on it. Other brethren have some studies on it. Godhead. What is the Godhead? It's not God in three parts. It's not God in three persons. The Godhead is God in the person singular of Jesus Christ. God, the Father, the soul is the only part, if you want to say, that's God, God the Father. And if there's no connection between God the Father and the Holy Spirit, then that Spirit is not of God. There has to be a connection. Same thing with the Son. If the God, if the Jesus Christ is not God the Father manifest in the flesh, He's not God. That's the whole side thing. <coughs> Sorry about that. But brothers and Christ, make sure that this is your authority. You know the hardest thing? I'm going to go on a little bit more of a rant. You know one of the hardest things today, dealing with professing Bible believers, it's hard to get them to give up traditions of men. Give up saying things that they've always said when you say chapter and verse, well, and they thought it was in here sometimes. They'll go, well, it's, it's, it's basically there. No, either it's there or it's not there. No, oh, it's basically there. No, it's either there or it's not there. Well, it's still a good thing to say. I thought this was your final authority in all matters of faith and practice. And practice, but faith and practice. This is your final authority. I've had that mistake on me. I was a false convert for the longest time, and the hardest thing for me was giving up stuff that wasn't in the scriptures. I said a lot of things that I was taught in these Babel buildings that were traditions of men, culture, heritage, traditions of men, but they don't line up with the scriptures. Brothers is Christ, it's hard. It is. Especially to get things out of your vocabulary. Okay. It's hard. You're used to saying it all the time because you thought it was truth. But when God corrects you, He works on you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy 
word is truth. So when he sanctifies you through his word and says, okay, that was right, but that over there is wrong. The way you've been saying this is wrong. What you've been doing over here is wrong. Do you submit to the book? The hardest thing today is dealing with people like that. They claim to be Bible believers, but they won't let go of traditions of men. They won't let go of the rudiments of the world. They won't let go of culture and heritage. The same culture and heritage that was leading them to hell. The world. Okay. Gentiles were pagan. Their culture always goes back to paganism. Every time. We, when before we were saved, we were without God and without hope in the world. This is now our final authority on matters of faith and practice. This is what's important. And it's difficult to deal with people nowadays. It's frustrating. Because a lot of them, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Right? I love them. But it's hard dealing with some of them that won't let go of traditions of men. Culture, heritage. But it says God the Father, who raised him from the dead. This is also another part I left out. God raised him from the dead? Well, the Bible also says that uh, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Talking about the Holy Spirit. So this says God the Father raised him from the dead. The Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He's talking about himself. So who raised, the, who raised Jesus from the dead? The Godhead. Great is the mystery of godliness. Verse 2. Let's get back to this study, though. Sorry, the brothers of Christ. 2. And all the brethren, brethren, which are with me, okay, unto the churches of Galatia. Saved sinners in Galatia. But he says, the brethren that are with me, Okay, we're, we're, we're writing this letter to you, everyone that's in the church of Galatia. Three, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. Why am I reading this? Because it describes what the church, when he says the churches of Galatia, he's talking to people that are saved by Jesus Christ, had their sins washed away. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Corinthians, they are very, uh, he's dealing with false converts. People who say, yeah, I want to go to heaven, but I love my sin. He was dealing with brethren that were getting pulled away back into the old man by false converts. He was dealing with uh, brethren that were starting to go back into the flesh. Letting the flesh run them and not letting God run them. Galatians, you have people trying to bring them back under the law. Today, you'd have the Catholic Church. They're all about their own laws. You've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this and this, and you can't even know if you're saved or not, if you're going to go to heaven or not. You can't know. You've got to do all these works. Galatians are doing the same thing. That's why I believe he said this really sternly, saying, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Might. Might. Talk about the catching away of the body of Christ. Where he catches up in death. Where Paul says, I'm in his stripes between two. Okay? To be with the Lord is far better. I believe it too. And those of you brothers of Christ have been saved for a while, you believe it too. We want to go home. Sometimes we get tired and weary. We want to go home. But to be here is much needful for you. We're here for a reason. God has us here for a reason. But God, Jesus Christ said, it is finished. There are no works. Repentance isn't a work. Prayer isn't a work. Don't fall for those lies. Satan doesn't want you getting saved. The easy believers in movement, they don't want you, they're working for Satan, and they don't want you to get saved. Okay? They want you to have a false sense of security. They want you to be false converts. But Paul says false Brethren, and I'm trying to say false brethren more than false converts, but false brethren. Okay, they're doing. Satan's trying to do everything he can, but in the end, you know what? Satan really can't do anything to prevent you or me from getting saved, brother says Christ, and we have that testimony. In the end, it's up to the individual person. He can listen to the world, or he can listen to God through through men preaching, like Paul does. Okay. Through brethren witnessing the ministry of reconciliation. 
But this is what we witness to. We witness for Jesus Christ through his word. Mm -hmm. According to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. It's not what you're doing, it's what he did. But notice there, he uses brethren, for those that are with us, brethren. Yeah, okay, brethren. I've used that term, brethren. Brothers and sisters in Christ. All right. That's what brethren is. It means brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Uh, don't need a feminist Bible. Stay away from feminist Bibles. Well, we, it has to say brother and sister. No, it does not. Okay. Stay away from the feminist Bibles. They mess things up greatly. What was it? 33rd book looked in there. He showed one Bible version where it was supposed to, the Bible actually says brothers and sisters. And it was a feminist Bible, and they took brothers out and threw all the responsibility on just sisters. Because it's a gender-inclusive Bible. Stay away from those. Just get a King James Bible, authorized version. Read it, believe it, hide it in your heart, live it. Okay. So we see brethren and churches. But if you read, you know, when he says churches, he goes in and talks about God the Father. So it's the church of God he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to add to it. He says churches and brethren. But in verse 3, he says grace and peace from God our Father. According to the will of God our Father. Turn to Ephesians. Evidence that uh, you're, you're a brethren, you're part of the church. God is your Father. Uh, turn to Ephesians 1. Jesus says, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. I and my Father are one. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Okay? If you love me, keep my commandments. Ye are my friends, if, if, if you do whatsoever I command you. What's the number one command for the lost world today, brothers and Christ? Obey the gospel. Obey the gospel. Had someone try to say in the Old Testament, you need to, you need to compare Scripture with Scripture. That verse in the Old Testament in um, Ecclesiastes where it says that um, fear God and keep His commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That's not just for Old Testament. Brothers and Christ, that's not for the Old Testament. We're still to fear God today, and we're to keep His commandments. What's the ultimate command for today? Obey the gospel, for they have not all obeyed the gospel. You need to compare Scripture with Scripture. It's not saying, uh, fear God, and you have to be circumcised and keep the laws of Moses. That's not what it said. It said you had to fear God and keep His commandments. What was His commandments in the Garden of Eden? Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of, the, of good and evil. Okay, his commandments vary from dispensation to dispensation. But the fact that you're supposed to keep God's commandments are there all through every dispensation. The fear of God is supposed to be there through every dispensation. We're going through the first dispensation already, uh, so that's why I'm using that as an example. Adam and Eve, if you eat of this tree, ye shall die. There's supposed to be a fear of God there. Satan took away that fear just as Satan has taken away the fear today. Oh, you won't surely die. And then he took away God's commands that you're supposed to follow. Yea, hath God said. He can be as God's knowing good and evil. That's what they do today, brothers and Christ. Yea, hath God said. They take away the fear of God. Instead of you elevating God, we'll get to this hymn, Jesus, name above all names. Instead of elevating God, they want you to elevate man. Where's the fear of God today? Where's the fear of God? Sorry to go off on that a little bit, but there needs to be the fear of God, brothers. We're we supposed to have the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The world's wisdom is don't fear God. God has made foolish the wisdom of this world. You want real wisdom? Fear God. Galatians, we did Galatians, Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints. So we see the word saints being used as a description, right, to the saints which are at Ephesus. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's a description of a type of people in a given area. 
okay, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Are you a Christian? According to the scriptures? I have, you kind of have to throw that in there. Like I said, I will never sit there and deny being a Christian. I won't. It gets misused in this world. Yes, it gets misused in this world. Yes, it gets abused in this world. But Paul did not deny being a Christian. That's not something that we're supposed to be doing, brothers of Christ. We might get tired of the word Christian, and we don't want to use Bible believer, and we want to use God-fearing, a Bible-believing. That's why I said God-fearing, Bible-believing ministry. God-fearing, Bible-believing. Okay, that's fine. But I'm not going to deny, deny being a Christian. Okay. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We see the word saints and the faithful in Christ Jesus. If you're a saved sinner, you are in Christ Jesus our Lord. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The soul takes over and everything changes. Not soul, I'm sorry. The soul gets to be in charge through God. God gives us the power. Our soul is connected to Jesus Christ. He leads, he commands. But our soul gets to say, I choose Jesus Christ. The flesh is not in charge anymore. The flesh gets put down. I choose to let Jesus Christ be in charge. I'll say it that way. Because I don't want to say it too wrong. Jesus Christ is in charge, and the soul gets to say, I'm listening to you, Lord. You command, I obey. What do I do? The flesh is like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't care what the flesh says. Lord, I care about what you say. You're in charge. You command, I obey. When you're lost, the, the flesh is in charge. So when you get saved, God comes into your life, and everything changes. How you look at everything, how you talk, how you treat everyone. Everything changes. Right? I just can't stand... Brother and sister Christ, and you have to deal with them too, the, the no-change life gospel people, the easy believism, no-change life, they get rid of prayer, they get rid of repentance. You can look like the world, act like the world, laugh at the world's jokes, you can continue being the old man. There, has to, there doesn't have to be a sacrifice of the old man on the, at the cross. You don't have to give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross. You can continue living however you want to live. You are your own boss. Ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. And it's just frustrating with these people. You try to witness to them. They're hard people to deal with. Faithful in Christ Jesus. Not just those that are in Christ Jesus, but those that are still being faithful. We read this in, um, oh gosh, I think it was Timothy, where it talks about how they, God knows them that are His. And it talks about that those that are His, that there are some that are in God's house. There is gold, silver, earth, uh, wood, and earth. Some to honor, gold and silver. Some to dishonor, wood and earth. You have some people that get saved, but they don't remain faithful. He's addressing the faithful. I just thought I'd point that out. But once again, we see saints and the faithful in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Washed in the blood. Philippians 1.1. Turn to Philippians 1.1. Paul and Timotheus. Paul and Timotheus. Not preacher Paul. Pastor Paul. Right? It's just Paul and Timotheus. We're writing a letter to the Philippians. Okay? At Philippi. To the, basically, to the servants of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi. To the saints that are at Philippi. And notice he says, servants of Jesus Christ. When he links Timothy with them, he's not, he doesn't say, I'm an apostle. Because Timothy isn't an apostle. Okay? He just says, the servants of Jesus Christ. Some people get so puffed up, they've got to have their titles. But they can't handle just being, I'm Philip, who is a servant to Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of the Lord. No, I've got to have titles. I've got to have people serving me. I gotta have titles. I gotta have the praise of men. 
You know, the Bible talks about those kind of people that want the praise of men over the over praising God. They want men telling them that they're doing good versus having God tell them that they're doing good. Oh yeah. Sometimes I fall into that trap with online junk, trying to look at the comments. It's not junk. I love the encouragement from the brothers and sisters of Christ, but I've had to correct a few that chart giving me the glory instead of giving God the glory. And there's some brethren that'll say, I thank God for this ministry. I thank God for this study. I've learned something. They, they give God the glory. Praise God. And they encourage me through giving God the glory. Praise the Lord. But some of them are saying, you are amazing. You're awesome. You're the greatest. You gotta watch out for those people. You're the only Bible believing, God fearing man online. You're the only true pe preacher online. You gotta watch out for those people. What are they doing? They're trying to elevate you. They're not elevating Jesus Christ. They're not giving God the praise. They're giving you the praise. They're trying to play at your vanity. They're trying to play at your pride. Trying to feed your pride and your ego. Watch out for those. It's Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. You say, oh, there's titles. Those aren't titles, they're descriptions. It says, with the bishops and deacons. Now, it doesn't say bishop so-and-so and deacon so-and-so. It's with the bishops. And in the Babel building system, they say, deacon so-and-so, deacon this. And it's like, no, you should say, I'll use my name again as an example, Philip, who is a deacon. Philip, who is a bishop. I'm not a bishop, and I'm not a deacon. Don't get me wrong, I'm just using that as an example, how it's supposed to be said. Okay? There's a lot of people who try to claim to be bishops today that aren't bishops. People who claim to be deacons today that aren't deacons. Right? There's no such thing as a one-man show getting behind the camera like I do and claiming you're a bishop. No, you are not. Right? No, you are not. But that's a whole other study. But we see bishops and deacons is who he's addressing. The people that are called in the ministry to serve the, the brethren and to serve God in a different capacity than the average saved sinner, the saint. Two, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll throw this in there. Deacons, real quick. Deacons are supposed to be men that are least esteemed among the church because they judge, they judge matters among the church. When there's disagreements, when one person's wronged another person and there's disagreements, it's the deacons that are supposed to be judging. That's why you pick, pick least esteemed among the church. Also, it's the deacons that have control of the money. So you have people that are least esteemed among the church that won't have respect of persons. Okay? Won't misuse that authority. Okay? But today the bishops like to have all the authority over the money. But, like I said, I don't want to get into that. Whole other study, whole other study. But we see bishops and deacons being mentioned there, and we see saints. And then Paul and Timothy, they just say, this is Paul and Timothy writing to you. We're servants of Jesus Christ. Turn to Colossians. Turn to Colossians. The biggest one's a servant of Jesus Christ. How was the last time you said you introduced yourself as a servant of Jesus Christ? I had to ask myself that. When's the last time I said, This is Philip, a servant of Jesus Christ? I'm not here to serve myself. I'm here to be a servant of Jesus Christ. And if that means serving the brethren, that means serving the brethren in ministry. Serving the brethren in uh, uh, spiritually, physically, financially, be a servant. Charity, true charity, self-sacrifice. Uh -huh. Colossians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul, there it is again. Here it is, I'm Paul. It's just Paul. There's no titles. It's just Paul. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God... And I'm thinking, when we went back there to Philipp, Philipp, Philippians, they didn't have a problem with false apostles. But when he writes someone like Colossians, they must be dealing with people claiming to be apostles, because he has to put in there, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. The Galatians were dealing with people coming in probably saying uh, uh, that they're apostles, having false apostles trying to steer them in the wrong direction, get them back under the Levitical laws, mm -hmm. circumcision, and the physical circumcision, and the Levitical laws in order to be saved. Here you see Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, 
and Timotheus, our brother. Our brother. It's a description. He didn't say brother Timotheus. Timotheus, our brother. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Saints is used and faithful brethren. Another way of saying brethren is brothers and sisters in Christ. Absolutely. In Christ. Now, when it says Timotheus, our brother, one thing that reminded me, I got finished watching, and I still like the movie. It's I like, you know, uh, the movie called Sheffy. Okay, I like it. But one thing that caught my eye in there is when they're doing the uh, campground meetings, which they're trying to lead people to Christ, everybody comes together, you invite families together, you come together and they, they witness for three or four days trying to get people saved. It's almost like a tent revival today, but back then it was a campground meeting. People would camp there for, for a week and they listen to the Word of God being preached, they listen to Jesus being preached, and people would get saved. Okay. But there was a part in there where a guy walks up to him, or um, Sheffy's trying to lead one guy to, to Jesus Christ, and the guy's like, I don't want I don't want it, don't hear I don't want to hear about it. I'll do it next year. Everybody will see me if I go down there and get saved. And and he's like, Well, we'll get, we'll do it right here in the seat. That's what I love about that part. It's not about altar calls, which aren't scriptural. It's not about Babel buildings. You have to go to a Babel building to be saved. You have to go to a Babel building to be a good Christian. Okay, no. He's like, we can get right here in your seat. Hey, we can go outside where there is nobody, where it's just you and God. Nope, I don't want to hear it. Don't talk to me about it. In other words, he's saying go away. But here's the part I'm talking about for this study. Another guy walks up to him and goes, Brother Sheffy, I need to be saved. Why is he calling him Brother Sheffy if he's lost? There's times in that movie where Sheffy will call anybody and everybody brother or sister. See how that word has been just thrown around too much? When you take it and make it a title and say brother Philip, sister so and so, it gets thrown around so much and gets misused. That man called Sheffy a brother when he was lost. Sheffy's not his brother. If he's lost, the lost world is not my brother, not my sister, not my brethren, not part of the church of God, not saints. You see? You see? All right. Timotheus, our brother, it's a description of who he is. It means he's saved. He's saved. Okay. He's saved just like I am. You can trust him like you can trust me. Okay. But we see saints and faithful brethren in Christ in Colossians. Once again, the whole point of doing this, do we see any of those other, a doctor, uh, PhD, reverend, uh, we already know how satanic that is, reverend is a, is a, is a title for God. Okay. Um, we're not supposed to have those titles, but some people like to take titles from God because ye can be as God's. They want to elevate themselves and put down Jesus Christ. Uh, you don't see Pastor Bob, or Pastor so-and-so, Preacher so-and-so, Teacher so-and-so. In other words, you turn the word teacher into a title. It's all about titles for some reason today. But as we're reading this, you're going to learn that titles, there's descriptions that mean everything. Descriptions matter, absolutely. But titles for mankind, not so much. Religious titles, not so much. Not so much. Mm -hmm. What matters? Are you in Christ Jesus? Mm -hmm. Are you a servant of Jesus Christ? Are you sanctified in Christ Jesus? That's what matters. And we're starting to lose sight of that, brother says Christ. That's what matters. We're starting to get, so not all of us, but some people are getting drawn into all the, we have to have the right titles and, and every, and traditions of men. Worldly ordinances. Okay. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, because we're going to drive this home, we're going to keep going. First Thessalonians, chapter 1. one. Because I don't want to say I left, anybody say we left something out. I'm just going through the Pauline epistles. Okay. Romans is to the people at Rome. But First Thessalonians 1.1. 1, 1. 
when he's actually addressing individual brethren, saved sinners, saints. We don't use the word saints that much anymore. Maybe I should start using the word saints, but then people will think, you're Catholic. But I'm not going to let the Catholic world dictate how I do things. This dictates how we do things. I know a brother in Christ who had an amazing beard, but someone thought he thought he was going to be mistaken as for someone else that he believes is false and, and teaching falsely, so he shaved off that beautiful beard. He let the world dictate whether he has a beard or not. He knows who he is. I love that brother in Christ, but he knows who he is. You should, I still miss that beard. You should get that beard going again. It was an amazing a beard that I couldn't even grow. Great beard. But the whole point of that is we're not to let the world dictate how we do things. This is our foundation. And here, beards are okay. <laughs> beards are good. Okay. Okay, and here it's okay to use the word saint. Even though they've perverted it, we just need to use it properly. Where they have perverted it. 1 Thessalonians 1.1 1, 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. Now you got three of them. Timotheus. Just their name. That's it. Unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now how they're interchangeable. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're in God the Father. See, it says uh, that you are in the Father. Oh, I forgot that verse. Sometimes if you forget something, look it up. Wow, everything got shut down on me. So I want to say it right and get you the address to that verse. It's that, uh, that Jesus is saying, I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. I'll link it in the description box later. I put it in, there's like a million... It's, it's, it's hard to find things sometimes when your brain just... Uh, sorry about that, Brother Sis Christ. Maybe one of you guys can throw it in the description box. Beat me to it. Um, but what Jesus says, I'm in the Father, and you're in me, and I in you. It's interchangeable. If you're in God, if you're in Jesus Christ, you're in God the Father. It's interchangeable. It's what the Godhead's all about. The, 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 you can't say this goes against the Trinity. God is uh, Jesus is not God the Father, and God the Father is not God the Son, because they're all separate gods. But there's only one God. Once again, I don't want to get into that too much. But here it says in the in, that the Thessalonians, which are in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the description of the Church of the Thessalonians. They're in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't just say church. He does a description of what that church is. Because all church means is a called out assembly. He still has to go into it. So when you have people trying to take the word church or church of God and turn it into a title, they're trying to avoid having to go in and describe what the church of God actually is so they can deceive people. Like I said, type in Church of God and see what, where, where it lands you on a search engine. You're going to find all kinds of people in apostasy, false converts, false religions. Because Paul is specific about explaining what the Church of God is. Okay, What the Church is that he's writing to. People that are in Christ Jesus our Lord. The changed life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay, are you in Christ Jesus? Then you're part of the church. No, there doesn't have to be a changed life. I can just do what I want and be in the flesh, carnally minded, Romans at chapter 8, carnally minded, walking after the flesh. Uh, then you're not in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're going to be capitalist, spiritually minded, and walking after the Spirit. 
That book, that, that chapter, when you actually sum it up, that chapter talks about two types of people and how God deals with their sin. It talks about saved sinners, spiritually minded, walking after the flesh, and it talks about lost sinners, carnally minded, I'm sorry, spiritually minded, and I'm slurring words, spiritually minded and walking after the capital S spirit is how is the description of someone who's saved. The description of someone who's lost, carnally minded and walking after the flesh. How does God deal with sin in a, in a saved sinner's life? Liberty. There's chastisement. Uh, you can lose things. You can lose rewards. You can lose inheritance. Uh, there's a cost to sin in the flesh today. But when it comes to eternity, how does God deal with that saved man when it comes to sin? He has liberty. How does God deal with that lost person? He's, he's earning wages. The wages of sin is death. But for the person that's spiritually minded, but the gift of God, spiritually minded and walking after this capital S spirit, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The lost world's earning wages, we have liberty. There's still a cost, but the ultimate cost has been paid for at the cross. We're not going to go to hell. We're not earning wages when we sin. We're losing rewards. Right? There, if you live after flesh, you shall die. We're wrecking this body in this life. There's, there's going to be punishment in this life. There's going to be consequences in this life. Okay? But are you in Christ Jesus our Lord? That's what the church is here. 2 Thessalonians. Turn to 2 Thessalonians. 1.1 one, one. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There again. What's the church there? This called out assembly in Thessalonica. Saved sinners, people who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. They're in God the Father, they're in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is the one that's in authority over them. This is the authority of God. They're not their own authority. Jesus Christ is. Grace, verse 2, grace, and peace, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There again, Paul, Savannah, Timotheus. No titles. Just descriptions. And church, it explains what the church is. Philemon 1.1. One, one. Philemon. We already did Timothy. We did Titus. Philemon 1.1. One, one. Okay, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He's writing this as he's in Rome as a prisoner. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, our brother, description, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved. Philemon. This is an individual. Once again, when you're addressing a, a brother or sister in Christ face to face, it's just Philip. Hello, Philip. How's your walk with the Lord? I'm not offended if you just say Philip. Okay. Unto Philemon, our dearly beloved, and fellow laborer. Okay, other men in ministry. You know, you're supposed to have fellowship with men that are in ministry. You're supposed to have fellowship with other men in ministry. There's not supposed to be a one-man show. Okay? Not at all. Be careful. Be wary of ministries that are 100% one-man show. I'm the only one out there that's still standing. I'm the only one preaching truth. Be careful about those. Be very careful about those. Okay? Fellow laborer, our dearly beloved. This is the first time you see the word beloved. Okay? Fellow laborer. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldiers fighting for the gospel, fighting for the word of God. And to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have Paul. He's talking about, I'm a prisoner now of Jesus Christ. He's in prison. Uh, and Timothy, our brother, and Phil to, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved. But notice, beloved is not a title. Hello, beloved. That's not what he said. He didn't sit there and said, hello, beloved. That's not what he did. What he said was, as Philemon, 
unto Philemon, our dearly beloved. Called him by name and said he's dearly beloved. That's what it means to be our, our beloved. Dearly beloved. Right? Be careful with titles. Be careful, be careful, be careful with titles. Please, brothers of Christ, don't fall in the trap of, oh, i got to have titles, I've got to have titles, i got to have titles. Okay? <clears throat> now, Romans 16.1. The reason I threw this in there is because we saw brethren, we saw someone who is our brother, but we didn't see sister. Is it wrong to say sister? Romans 16.1. Turn all the way back to Romans 16.1. I wanted to throw this in there. Did Paul ever address anybody as a sister? <laughs> Romans 16, 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, not Sister Phoebe, and definitely not uh, Bishop Phoebe or Deacon Phoebe. There is no women bishops, no women uh, deacons. Okay? But unto you, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister which is a servant of the church, which is at Censoria. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. But she's a servant of the church. Like I said, when's the last time you said, I'm a servant of God, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ? I'm, hello, I'm Philip. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. That's kind of died down a lot, hasn't it? You, have, you don't really see people say that that much anymore. Who are you? I'm, I'm of so-and-so, I'm Pastor Bob, and I'm Preacher this, Preacher Bob, I'm, you know, Reverend Bob, i am got all these titles, and I'm up here and everything. When's the last time someone said, who are you? I'm just a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of the Lord. Kind of, it kind of puts you down and puts Jesus up. I serve Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm down. Jesus is up. He's my strength. He's my wisdom. He's my lifeline. He's my all in all. I'm here to serve the Lord. I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm here to serve the brethren. But that's being a servant of the Lord also. Okay. But Phoebe, our sister. Okay. Our sister. Our being the body of Christ. Okay which is a servant of the church, which is at Corinth. Now, oftentimes we didn't talk much about the body of Christ, the body of Christ, because the body of Christ is a description of what you become a part of when you get saved. Your, your soul is connected to your body, this wicked, filthy, wicked body. And when you get saved, there's that spiritual circumcision made without hands, and now your soul is connected to Jesus Christ. That's why we say the body of Christ. That's why we say, are you in Christ Jesus. Where's the changed life? Paul talks about proving your own selves. Prove it. You claim to be a Christian. You claim to be in Christ, a Christian, that Jesus saved you. God saves. Prove it. Prove it. But brothers and sisters in Christ, amen. We need to do things God's way. And we need to go, go back to not being so stuck on titles. Okay, Here's a song I'm going to sing, and then we're going to do another video that's going to be a two-part video where we're going to go through this song, and we're going to line it up with the Scripture and say, does this song line up with the Scriptures to teach you how that when you get across hymns, that you need to be comparing them to the Scriptures and making sure the hymns line up with Scripture. Okay, I'll give you a good example. There's that uh, old uh, song they used to sing as a false convert in a non-dispensational Babel building. And the song was, More love, more power, more of you in my life. And it sounds good. And the way they would sing it passionately. And they would sing it loud. And they would repeat it over and over and over. But when you compare that to the scriptures, that's actually anti-scripture. More love. Jesus said there is no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Jesus gave his life for us. He said it is finished. 
There's no greater love than that. There is no more love than that. But the lost world doesn't want that love. They want the world's version of what love is, not what the Bible version of what love is. Remember what Jesus said, if a love, man loved me, he, he will keep my words. Love is an act. Was it? Love is not a feeling, it's an act of your will. But the world loves it when love is a feeling. It's a feeling. And that's what that song's all about. Flesh, flesh, flesh. More love. You can't get more love than what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. But the people that, when I sung it, I was lost. But the people that sing this song is lost. More love, more power. Flesh. You know what the Bible says? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. You want power in your life? Get saved! And let God be the power in your life. No, no, I don't want Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, and I don't want to go through salvation the Bible's way. I want to go through the world. More power. Just want more and more and more and more. Well, this is all you need. More of you in my life. What does the Bible say? You have the Holy Spirit. When you truly get saved and born again, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will be in you. I will come to you. And he sends the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit of God in you. God is with you 24-7. You can't get more of God in your life than that. You can't. But what is this? This is lost people trying to seek God outside of doing things God's way. Outside of doing things God's way. So brothers and sisters Christ, it, it, you need to be, we're going to do another video where we're going to be going through this, but Jesus' name above all names. Please forgive me, I don't have the best voice in the world, but we all have beautiful voices to the Lord. He loves to hear you sing praises to His name. Sing hymns, brothers and Christ. But Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us. Blessed Redeemer, living Word. Jesus, Lord God Almighty, Wonderful Counselor, Light of the World, the Prince of Peace, Hope of glory, man of sorrows, Lamb of God. We're going to do a whole other study on these. God's titles are what's important. Why aren't we studying those titles? Why aren't we uplifting those titles? Why aren't we glorifying God through those titles? Why is mankind so... Because mostly it's because mankind's all about me, myself, and I. Yea, hath God said, me, myself, and I. I he can be as God's knowing good and evil. They have to have titles. It's all about lifting man out, up and forgetting God. We talked about this, how you can forget the God of thy salvation. Some brethren have forgotten the God of their salvation. They've forgotten why they got saved, who, why they needed to get saved, who it was that saved them, and who it is they serve. They get puffed up. They get lifted up. And Jesus gets put down. These titles are important titles. The hymn's called Jesus, Name Above All Names. And I know it differs for some. People can find different versions. But you could write like ten different stanzas going over different titles and descriptions of who God is in the scriptures and make a song out of it. That's what matters. And our descriptions of who we are always trace back to who Jesus Christ is. A servant of Jesus Christ, sanctified by Jesus Christ. It always goes back to Jesus Christ. God manifests in the flesh. So brothers and sisters of Christ, I know this might have been a little bit boring for some people. All you did was just run through and yeah, I was using Paul as an example. So for some of you, you might have got a lot about this. For some of you, you're like, yeah. 
So brothers and sisters in Christ, it's okay to call people brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, when you're talking to me, Philip is just fine. One-on-one, -on -one, Philip is just fine. But we get so stuck in titles and everything, and within that next thing you know, those descriptions that are supposed to be descriptions and not titles start to get misused and abused by the world, perverted by the world. Be careful. All this was was just a wake-up call to be careful. Get back into God's titles and get back into our descriptions and say, Hey, do I line up with that description? Am I in Christ Jesus? Or have I been starting to resurrect the old man? Am I starting to go the way of the world? If you're in Christ Jesus, you're doing things God's way. If you're in the world, you're doing things the world's way. Right? This is just an example. So hopefully this helped, brothers and sisters of Christ. We'll get into, the, like I said, the next study we'll probably get into is Jesus' name above all names. We're going to go through each one of his titles and talk about them. Okay? That's in this psalm. This is not every title in the Bible, but I want to go through the psalm to show, hey, this is what we need to be doing to old hymns, as well as new so-called Christian music, contemporary Christian music. Does it line up with the scriptures, or does it go against the scriptures? Okay? So I'm going to end this with, like Paul does, he, he set the example, and I like, and I love this example, grace and peace. That's what I want for the body of Christ, brother and Christ. I'm tired of the division, I'm tired of the drama, I'm tired of the backbiting, and the whispering, the bearing false witness, railing for railing. I'm tired of the pride and arrogant men in ministry, and some of the men that are out there following these ministries. I'm tired of all of that. That's not what I want, Brother Sis Christ. The division, I don't want that. What do I want? Grace and peace. And grace and peace can only come from God our Father. Jesus said, or Jesus, Paul said that um, we're to be of the same mind and the same judgment, and we're supposed to be striving together. And we can only do that if grace and peace from God our Father, if this is our final authority. Grace and peace is what I want, Brother Sis Christ, and that's what I've been praying for hardcore lately. And I've been getting a little burnt out, and it's like, not in the prayer, I'm talking about everything that's been going on in the body of Christ as a whole. And I keep praying for the body of Christ, pray, pray, pray for the body of Christ. I want grace and peace among the body of Christ that can only come from God our Father. And my love for you, Brother Sis Christ, is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We just talked about that. In Christ Jesus our Lord. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.